Hi, welcome back to this video series on cryptography. Today I will continue my discussion on frequency analysis and how we can use this frequency analysis technique uh, for crypto analysis. In particular, I will be introducing you to the concept of index of coincidence. It's a metric defined to measure um, whether a piece of um, text most likely is a meaningful text or not. So it's how do we automatically measure that? So um, the idea of in index of coincidence um, was developed back in 1920 by William Fredman. Um, you can learn more about him uh, on uh, internet, uh, but I will focus on the on the technology or, or the metric aspect of it. Okay, index of coincidence, I N D E X index, and then I will use a much more shortcut because it's just a lot of uh, uh, it's a, it's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> index coincidence okay so what it means is that suppose you are given um, a piece of string okay and uh, you want to uh, ask what is the probability that any two randomly picked letters are um, coincident um, meaning uh, uh, clash okay um, so this is basically the idea of this uh, index coincidence metrics index of coincidence to be more precise okay so let me more formally define what it is, okay? Suppose you're given a string X, okay? X may be made of, um, say, uh, N letters, right? X1, X2, Xn, okay? So basically the string length of um, X is N, okay? The question we are asking is, suppose you pick uh, two letters randomly from such an X, what is the probability um, they clash or they are the same. Okay, that's basically what we are asking. Um, so it could be somebody picking two random numbers and just say, for example, xi and xj. Uh, we are asking what is the probability xi is equal to xj. All right. Um, how do we reason about that? It turned out that that can uh, that can be easily computed as follows. We are choosing two elements from a set of n elements, right? This is x1 all the way to xn. How many ways um, we can choose that? Uh, if we are given n elements, right? That's basically x1 all the way to xn. Uh, we can choose two in nc2 ways. This is the combinatorial concept, right? nc2 means um, n items are there and you are picking two items from from n items okay that's the the, the notation i will be using n c2 okay so some books might have used something like this n c2 some books use this notation with a bracket n2 all right they both are the same so uh, this this will become the denominator for our probability computation right because we wanted to find out what is the probability that uh, two letters are equal or identical? So we have NC2 here. This is number two, not to be confused with one, NC2, okay? So what are the possibilities now for the numerator of the probability com computation? We want identical pairs. So what we are going to do is, we are going to uh, convert this into a frequency analysis problem. So Let's assume um, we, we use the notation fi to denote the frequency of the ith um, character. So what it means is that um, we will make an assumption that our alphabet set is um, from 0 to 25, right? Meaning 0 is A, uh, 1 is B, and so on. So in English, we have 20, 26 um, alphabet characters, therefore, we should be able to write and um, encode them from 0 to um, 25. This is A and this is Z. So, incremented by 1. Okay, all right. So, what we are going to do is we are going to measure uh, how many times uh, A occurs, how many times B occurs, uh, how many times C occurs, and so on in this, in this um, given string. So, that becomes the frequency, right? Uh, frequency is just a measure of how many times that certain things repeat. Okay, so um, now it becomes much easier to formalize the problem. The problem is that uh, we wanted to compute the probability that any two randomly chosen 
um, letters from this string X um, are identical. So we will use the notation ICX, index of coincidence, is just a probability. Okay, we will be able to write this as sigma summation i equal to 0 through 25 because we have 26 uh, letters in our English alphabet. Okay, you can easily generalize it for non English and other other things as well. So I equal to 0 all the all the way to 25 and we will have f i over 2 meaning um, choose two items right from fi items um, remember fi denotes the frequency of uh, ith character in this string x so if i is uh, if, if for example f of 0 means how many times 0 occurs 0 means a and um, f of 10 means how many times 10 occurs in this uh, given string okay that's basically what we are talking about as frequency and why did i do fi c2 or fi choose 2 because we wanted to choose two elements and they must be identical. Um, so we are only interested in identical elements. That's because in probability, we, we put here all possibilities in the denominator. In the numerator, we choose uh, the, the events that, that are of interest for us. Okay. All right, that's basically the definition of index of coincidence. And uh, now we can expand this and do a little bit more uh, arithmetic. Um, so I wanted to recall the definition of NCK, right? NCK means you have N items and you're choosing um, K of them, right? How many ways can you do that? So you probably remember this from your combinatorics, something like this, N factorial by uh, K factorial times N minus K factorial. Okay, so in our case, K is two. Okay, which means we could just substitute k by two in our case, right? So, which means the uh, we can rewrite this as sigma i equal to zero to twenty-five, right? Uh, f i times f i minus one. You should be able to convince yourself that's that's true if you just apply this formula, right? By n times n minus one. Okay, that's basically it. If you take NC2, for example, it's nothing but N factorial by two factorial into N minus two factorial, right? So all the way up to N minus two factorial will cancel out. So what you're left with, with is N into N minus one factor, N into N minus one, that's what you're seeing. The two will get canceled out on the numerator and denominator because the numerator also has a two factorial, okay? That's basically it. And now um, we can st start at this and um, reason about from a probability point of view, what is the meaning of probability? It's frequency by the total uh, um, number of possibilities, right? So the idea is pretty neat now. So we can approximate ICX as approximation, right? How do we approximate this? If you start at this a little bit, you could see FI and FI minus one are pretty similar, right? You're just subtracting one from FI. And N and N minus one are also pretty close to each other. So uh, we could just say this is nothing but um, F, fi by n times fi by n, which means you're squaring the probabilities, right? That's the reason why I'm going to do approximation. This should be hopefully convincing that index of coincidence is nothing but, this is the formula. Okay, what is pi? Pi is nothing but fi by n, right? That, that, that is clear from the definition of probability. Fi is the frequency, n is the total length, uh, or total number of occurrences, um, of all the characters, therefore, fi by n is an approximation of pi. fi minus one by n minus one is nearly same as fi by n. Therefore, we could say uh, we are going to approximate I, ic of x by i equal to zero to twenty-five pi square summation. Now, for the English language, in the previous segment, I talked about frequency analysis. So, frequency analysis was done by counting how many times each character each English alphabet occurs on large volumes of texts, um, magazines, poems, and whatnot. And the people were able to come up with the frequency table. Therefore, they were able to come up with probability table for each uh, English alphabet, okay? So using that, 
they were able to plug in the values of uh, probability of uh, A occurring, B occurring, C and so on all the way to Z. And it turned out that this summation value is um, approximately the same as for English language, uh, 0.065 approximately, 0.065, okay. So given a string X, now um, we can compute uh, its index of coincidence using this nice little formula that you are saying here. This is the general formula and this is the um, English approximation when when your alpha when your characters x1 through xn are English alphabets okay coming from uh, language English language text okay if you know x is x is should not be totally random otherwise this is not going to be true if x is is a is a string coming from a sentence or a, you know something people write in regular li life then IC of X is approximately close to 0 0.065. And I'm going to show it to you some examples and show to you also some random X and, and how the ICX behaves in that case. All right. So before we go to the demo part, I want to clarify and, and just to make sure that this idea is, is clear. So we are given a, a string X, okay? And we are asked to compute what is the probability that if any two randomly uh, um, chosen um, letters from X uh, will be identical. What is the probability any two randomly chosen uh, letters will be identical? That's the ICX. So how many ways we can choose two items from N items, right? N, N is the total strength and uh, NC2 is the number of possible ways we can choose. On the numerator, we are only interested in uh, choosing items that are the same. So F0 means how many times zero occurs. F1 means how many times one occurs and so on. Um, that's basically how we encode our, our alphabets into numbers. And therefore, uh, we can just say the numerator must be F5 choose two. And then um, we apply this, uh, this nice little formula from combinatorics. And then we got this, this one. And then we approximate this by PA square because it's, as you can see, FI, FI minus one by N, N, N minus one is pretty much uh, same as pi, this part, fi by n is pi, right? That's the basic definition of probability. So we are doing pi times pi approximately. And therefore, we get pi square. And if we instantiate this x for a regular English language uh, text, uh, it has been empirically validated that um, from large collection of uh, texts, people have studied it and it, it, can, it came to be close to 0 0.065. Okay, that's basically the definition of index of coincidence. Why do we need to know this? Uh, later I will show to you that when you are trying to do crypt analysis of a, say um, beginner cipher, uh, beginner cipher, which is not that simple, we will be able to leverage index of coincidence metrics uh, for our purpose. 